Father, we want a move of your spirit, of your presence in our lives. So Lord, we focus towards you today. We focus to you. And we thank you, Father God, that in this service, in this time, the hearts are touched, hearts are moved towards you, and that you move in our midst. Lord, I pray for those that are in the building, that your spirit would be upon them, that you would uh, wrap your arms of love around them. For those that are watching online, Lord, I pray, Father God, that your arms would be wrapped around them, that your sweet spirit would invade the atmosphere of where they are right now in the name of Jesus. We give this time to you in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, amen. You can be seated. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, worship team. Hallelujah. Well, welcome to the last Sunday of November. Can you believe it? We got one month left of 2020. And I, I know a lot of people are like, yes, if I, I've almost made the finish line. I'm almost into 2021. But uh, because this is the last Sunday of November, what we're going to do is we're going to um, finish up on 30 days of thanks and go into um, a, more of a Christmas theme. So, uh, but before we do that, I want to say thank you to everyone who brought clothes for our clothes drive. Um, and I want to say thank you to everyone who went out and distributed all of the clothes to our, uh, to our homeless community. Amen. That's such a, such a good thing of us reaching out. And so we did that in November. In coming up in December, on December 19th. We are going to have a toy giveaway to the community. And we are joining uh, with Toys for Tots and with Waymaker Church. And we're going to have a toy drive. Literally, it's a toy drive this year because people will drive in and we will hand them their gifts in the car. <laughs> Rather than having a big extravaganza. So um, if you would like to be a part of helping handing out the toys then please see one of us after service. We'll get your name on the list. We do not need toys because we've already had all the toys come in. So that's a great thing. We're already ready to go. We've got all the toys that we need. But if you know of families that need to be on the list to receive a toy for their child, then you can go to our Facebook page and you can find all of the information there. And if you're not on social media, then you can again come to one of us 
and we will help you out with that information, okay? It's good that we reach out and we, we help others, isn't it? All right. So this month we focused on 30 Days of Thanks. Uh, I've seen some great posts on social media. Um, I've had different ones come up to me and tell me some things that God has done in their life. Um, I thank God for a fantastic wife who knocked it out of the park on Monday for, with, with our Thanksgiving meal. Um, that turkey was good. And that turkey is gone. <laughs> so what we did this year was uh, Josiah works for Amazon and Josiah worked on Thanksgiving Day. So we thought, let's have our Thanksgiving meal on Monday where he can be a part. So we did that, and um, man, everybody jumped in the kitchen. It was all good. Uh, the food was good. Um, I've had stuffing like for breakfast. I've had stuffing for lunch. I've had stuffing for dinner. And then I'll just and throw a little bit of cranberries in there. Woo, come on. I'm ready to go again. Um, but then I came up with the idea of let's have all the leftover turkey. Um, let's throw it in and have some enchiladas. So on Thanksgiving Day, we had turkey enchiladas. And that was awesome because it was awesome because they were good. But it was awesome because our son got off early. And he, unbeknownst to us, he showed up right when we sat down at the table. So that was a good thing. So I am thankful for a lot of things in my life. Um, one of the reasons, the most important reason that we should be thankful or that our, our focus should go towards is thanks to God. Now, a couple of things I put on here. Thanksgiving and praise to God is an important aspect of a believer's life because, and I'm going to give you three quick things and then we're going to go on. Number one, it keeps us humble. When you remember where your next breath is coming from, you are thankful to who is giving you your next breath. When you remember all the good things that God has done in your life and it wasn't just your talent, you become thankful to him. So being thankful to God, having a heart of thanksgiving helps us to be humble and not be all about ourselves but remember that it is all about Jesus. The second thing is, um, when we give thanksgiving, is it puts the focus, the proper focus, on who is important, God. And then it puts the proper focus on what's important. You know, we can get caught up in the whole mindset of um, my stuff, my gadgets, those are, the, I'm thankful for my gadgets. I'm thank you, thankful for all my stuff. You know, some of the musicians might be like, I'm thankful for, my, for my, my bass. I'm thankful for my drums. Thank you for new sticks. You know, there's all different kinds of things we can be thankful for. But if we put the focus on the gift and not the giver, then it causes us to become twisted in our lives. And so being thankful to the Lord helps us in those three areas. Wednesday night, if you didn't have a chance to be with us Wednesday night, I encourage you, go back and, and watch on either Facebook or on YouTube um, Wednesday night. We said a couple of things there. Number one, give praise to God in the midst of circumstances and not necessarily for the circumstances. And we, we, you know, I'm just piggybacking off of what Cantrell shared in the tenant 10 when he did one of the tenant tens. You know, I'm not thankful that bad things happen. I am thankful that God is in my life in the bad things that happen. There's a difference there. I don't thank God that somebody stole my stereo out of my car. I'm like, oh, thank you, Jesus. Somebody stole my stereo. You know, we, we don't do that. But what we do do is we say, I thank you, Father God, that you are my supplier. 
You are the one who brought me the first stereo. You'll bring me the next stereo. Now, back when I was a kid, when I was in high school, I was thankful that somebody stole my stereo out of my car. <laughs> when my, my parents bought me a really nice car, but the stereo was, uh, it was not good. So I got in, you know, it was my, I, I usually had the car in the garage. I opened up the garage door. I got in the car, turned the car on. And what every teenager does is the first thing we do after we turn on the car is we go to the stereo to turn on, to turn on some music. And I put my hand right through the hole. I'm like, oh, well, insurance came through in a big, good way. And so I got a better stereo than what I had before. So in that instance, I was thankful for the robber that came. Um, but then I prayed a protection over my car. I'm no more stereos gone. We don't thank God for the circumstance, but we thank God that he is with us in the circumstance. We thank God that he takes us through the circumstance. We don't stay in the circumstance. So whatever tragedy, whatever circumstance that you have found your life in and you're trying to figure out, how do I thank God in this? This is just all kind of twisted wrong. And I'm supposed to be thankful to the Lord. You know, because it says in 1 Thessalonians 5.18, it says in every situation, no matter what the circumstances, be thankful and continually give thanks to God. For this is the will of God for you in Christ Jesus. The reason why we thank God in all of the circumstances is when we thank him, he's able to manifest in the situation. In other words, when we recognize he's in my situation, when, he, when we recognize that he's in your situation, what happens is he becomes, a, his power becomes available to us in the situation. All right, I can see some people ate a little too much turkey. I need some amens here. I need some help here. All right, praise the Lord. The second thing that I shared on Wednesday night is we praise God for who he is and not just what he does. You know, sometimes we can kind of get in that whole mindset of, um, thank you, God, for what you did, but, but I'll only come when I need something. And I know a lot of us, that, that's an easy trap to get into. That, that we just go to God when we need something. When there's a problem, I need you, God. When there's not a problem, stay out of my life. When he starts to tug us a certain direction, we're like, no, 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 God. No, you stay in your spot. You're just the answer the prayer's spot. And we can get into a mode where we start thanking God for what he does for us rather than who he is to us. And that is a very um, dangerous trap to be in. You know, as I, was, as I was thinking about it, I was almost thinking, you know, sometimes we do that with like our dogs. We praise them when they do good because we want to reinforce the doing good. I mean, we praise them when they go to the bathroom outside and they don't go to the bathroom inside. We can sometimes even do that with people or we can do that with, um, uh, you know, just we're, we're, we're rewarding someone for right behavior. We don't do that to God. We thank God out of a sincere heart for who he is and what he does, but primarily for who he is. And if we get our hearts and our mindsets on, I praise him for only what he does or when he does something, 
then that, that, is, uh, that is an area where we need to examine our hearts because our hearts are not, are not in the right direction. Okay? Matthew chapter 16, verse 1 in the Passion Translation. It says, One day some of the Pharisees and those of the Jewish sect known as the Sadducees approached Jesus, insisting that he prove to them that he was the Messiah. Now, the Pharisees and the Sadducees were actually enemies. They were religious enemies. They, they each thought they were God's chosen, and they fought all the time. But then now they're coming, they're banding together to go after Jesus. And they said, show us a supernatural sign from heaven. They wanted to see Jesus do something. They're like, just, just give us a miracle. In other words, they were trying to get something from him. Just give us a miracle. Matthew 16, 4 says, this is Jesus' response to them. A wicked and wayward generation always asks for signs. But the only sign I provide for you will be the sign of Jonah, the prophet. Then he turned away and left them. It's really important that even we, as Christians, as having Jesus in our lives, that we don't go looking for Jesus, to Jesus for signs, wonders, and miracles. We come to him with an attitude of, I have come to spend time with you. I have come to, to love you because of who you are and, and how you have changed my life, how you are in my life. And as I do that, signs, wonders, and miracles are a byproduct of that. But a lot of times we're like, give, give me a miracle, Jesus. Give me a miracle, and then I'm going to be all about you. And the reality is that we need to be all about Jesus, and then the miracle will happen, because what happens is the blessed life begins to manifest within us. Now, the sign of Jonah, when I first looked at that, I was like, the sign of Jonah? What's the sign of Jonah? I don't know about any sign of Jonah. But then when I started really meditating on it, doing a little bit more research, part of Jonah's life or his experience is a, is a, a foreshadowing of Jesus. Because Jonah goes into the belly Representing Jesus going into hell. He is, he, Jonah was dead to this life. He could not do what he wanted to do. He was stuck in the belly of the fish for three days. Jesus was in hell for three days. Then Jonah, you know, once he did get right, he was spit up on the beaches of Nineveh. And he proclaims a message, and it says all of Nineveh got saved. They all turned, repented. Yeah. There was a power in Jonah's life after he came out. Jesus, we recognize, there was, a, there was an exponential power in his life, in the resurrection. He came out. The earth gave him up. And then he began to preach in power. And he's still preaching in power. Amen? Amen. So Jesus was telling them the true miracle. You're looking for, for, you know, for turning water into wine. You're looking for, for the, wa you know, the waters to be parted. You're looking for water to come out of a rock like Moses. You're looking for all, you know, quail to come in, manna to drop down. You're looking for all these signs. But I'm telling you, the greatest miracle is the sign right here. When you ask me into your life. That's the greatest miracle. So now let's transition from 30 days of thanks and thanksgiving into Christmas. The title that I have for this conversation is True North. True North. 
We know from the stories in Matthew chapter 2, verse 2, that the wise men followed his star. It says, saying, where is he who has been born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east, and we have come to worship him. You notice that they didn't say, um, we're following Pluto. We're following a star that was already in the, in, the, in the cosmos. There was a star that was dedicated to Jesus. And the wise men followed that star to Bethlehem. Now, today we don't follow stars. When I want to go to Penol, or I want to go to Oakland, or I want to go to Disneyland. I don't get outside. I don't say, um, honey, uh, we got to wait till nighttime so I can see the stars because we've got to drive by the stars. We don't do that anymore. Nowadays, we have GPS. <laughs> Global positioning. Service. For those of you who don't know what GPS is, Google Maps, Apple Maps. We have GPS. Now that is global positioning service. And it's, if you've got a smartphone, it's on your phone. Now GPS is talking with a satellite. Our phones are talking with a satellite in the sky. And that satellite in the sky sends a message down to our phones, telling our phones where they are. And sometimes that can be interrupted, you know, when you're in the city and you're, you know, your GPS keeps clocking because it's, there's the interference of all of the, all of the um, stuff in the, all the buildings are interrupting the signal. But what's happening is there is a signal that is coming. There is a message that is coming from the satellite to your phone. Now that's the rough version of how GPS works. It's easy to get off track in life. It's easy to get our, our internal GPS where it's constantly clocking because we've gone off or we have shut off the signal. In our, not, in our lives, we need to continually be recalibrating to Jesus and his words for our life. I know in, in this uh, environment that we have found ourselves in in 2020, it has been easy to have all kinds of signal disruptors. Just, I mean, there, any one of the things that has happened in this year, we would have said, uh, that wasn't too good of a year. But it just seems like it's been compounded every month. Um, and, you know, I thank God that God is in the middle of my, uh, in the middle of my life and in the middle of my month. But I, I honestly don't think we're done with 2020 yet. <laughs> there's, still, there's still four or five more weeks of some surprises. And I, and I honestly believe there are going to be some more surprises. But it is all the more reason why we must have Jesus in our life. Where we have to be tuned in to the true north. Jesus knows what the true north is. Because Jesus is our true north. He is our true north. Acts chapter 17 verse 28 says, for in him we live and move and have our being. If you've gotten away from that, I want to encourage you to once again reposition. To open up your heart to the Lord. And let the Lord come in and get some things right. If your life is off balance out of position, blurred by hard circumstances, I encourage you to recalibrate 
and to put your eyes and focus on Jesus. Psalms 34 verse 5 says, Those who look to him are radiant, and their eyes or their faces are never covered with shame. Those who look to him are radiant. Their faces are never covered with shame. John, 1 John 4, 9, The light of God's love shined within us when he sent his matchless son into the world so that we might live through him. In him we live and move and have our being. If you've come to this point in this building, in this service, or online, and you're saying, my 2020 has been hell on earth, and I am lost, I am encouraging you to put your focus back on Jesus. If you don't know how to do that, we're going to sing a song and then Pastor Peggy is going to come up and she's going to lead us on how to reposition our lives. Stick with us if you're online. In this room, it's easy to get off. I mean, we can have a bad drive to work and be off. One too many people cut us off. And we're just, we're ready for, you know, and not really road rage, but, but road irritation. Just, just kind of get a little, I just, God, let me get a little out of sorts with this person. And I'll ask for forgiveness later. later. But God wants to be the peace. He wants to be the love. He wants to be the joy. He is all those things. And if we're not experiencing those things, then we need to reposition. One of the ways that we can reposition is during times of praise and worship, we can have a talk with God. Just let everything settle down and refocus. And then Pastor Peggy's going to come up after the song. 2020 hasn't been the best of years, but I've got to say it, in our lives, it hasn't been a bad year. My heart hurts for those that it has been a bad year. But I do know that one of the reasons why it has not been a bad year is because Jesus is in my year. And every time I wake up, I invite him into my day. He's not a Sunday only Jesus. He's an everyday Jesus. He's an everyday Savior. Let's stand as we spend a little bit of time in worship.
believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. And it says, for if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and you believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. And so I want us to just clarify something. Sometimes we don't feel saved, but according to the word, if we confess with our mouth and we believe in our heart, the word says we are saved. That's right. And so sometimes you just have to remind yourself, this may be a little bit different of a, of a opportunity, but I want, we, sometimes we just have to remind ourselves in our heart, if I confess the Lord Jesus in my, with my mouth and I believe with my heart, the fact is that's all I need to do. Because I couldn't do it. I can't earn it. I can't work hard enough. That's why Jesus did it. And so today, if you've not, according to the word, confessed Jesus as the Lord of your life, and you've not believed in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, I'm going to give you an opportunity today in this house. And so if we can just bow our heads, according to the scripture, if you've not made the Lord, the Lord your Lord and Savior, and you want to do so today, I just want you to just boldly raise your hand. It's going to be the best decision that you've ever made in your life. The word says that if we will, if we're not ashamed of him, he won't be ashamed of us. And so is there anybody in this room that you say, I want to take this opportunity. I don't want to let it go. All right. And so we're still in this room, guys, we're still going to agree with people online. If you want to make the Lord Jesus your Lord and Savior, if you would just pray this prayer after me, and all of you in this room, just as though your loved one was saying this prayer, I want you to hook up, and I want you to pray after me. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus, I confess you as my Lord and Savior, Jesus. I believe in my heart that you're alive, that you will make a difference in my life. I give you my weakness and I take your strength. I give you my sickness and I take your health. Father, I just give you everything of me. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. There's nothing like serving him, huh? Nothing like it. Amen. Amen. In trust. Praise God. We're going to take our tithes and our offerings now, and Kentrell's going to share just for a moment with us. Praise the Lord, everybody. Amen. It's tithes and offering time. I was just thinking about how we can get in robot mode during this time. You know, this is just something we know to do. It's the part of the service, or we can connect with our heart during this time of the service. Amen? There's a scripture in the Bible that says that life and death is in the power of the tongue. So what that's telling me is this, that I can confess God's word during this time and I can see the harvest because I know I've planted a lot. You know, I planted a lot of seeds and I want to see that harvest. I want to see that harvest and I start confessing God's word over my harvest. And I just want to share this last scripture. In Mark 11, 20 and 22, it says, In the morning, as they passed by, they saw the fig tree dried up from the roots. And Peter, calling to remember it, said unto him, Master, behold, the fig tree which thou cursed is withered away. And I was thinking about how Pastor was talking about the uh, 2020, but I want to tell you what, there is a 2021, and it starts today. As you speak God's word today, you're going to have your harvest for tomorrow. Because they seen that the, the fig tree was dried up, right? And then they passed by the fig tree the next day, and they said, look, Master, that's the fig tree that you cursed. It withered away. But they spoke. One day, and they had the manifestation the next day. So your 2021 starts today. Start speaking the harvest that you want. Start speaking. Start, start confessing.
seed. Amen? And you're a seed. Glory to God. I'm just going to say a prayer. And um, we can give electronically. You can text 84321. And you can also text, type lighttobag.com and click, click donations. Amen? Um, Father God, we just come to you. We thank you. We praise you for this day. This is the day you made. We'll be glad we're rejoicing. Father God, we thank you for the harvest, Father God. Father God, we thank you, Father God, that that harvest is manifesting. We thank you, Father God, for the wealth of the wicked is laid out for the just. Father God, we thank you that you withhold no good thing from them that love you and walks uprightly before you, Father God. So we just claim that it's done in the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. 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 I want to give a special request. I don't always do this, but I want to give a special request. For those of you that are watching online, uh, I want to ask you to give in this offering. I know that many times uh, we come on and we don't necessarily give because there's a disconnect of being not in the room. But we are in the process of replacing all of our audio and video equipment so that we can reach more people online. So I want to encourage those of you that, you know, you got a heart for, for reaching people. Typically on a month, we reach in between five and 10,000 people online. And we want to do a better job in reaching people. And so that's going to take us really a minimum of about $3,000 for us to do that. So if you want to get special towards that, you can certainly do that. But I want to ask you that you're watching right now. I want to ask you to specifically give. You give what you can give. You give what you've decided in your heart to give. But don't let this opportunity go by that you can help reach other people online. And for those of you that are giving in the room, we've got offering envelopes if you want to give that way. Really, the best way is to give electronically and the buckets will be at the doors when you exit. Let's go ahead and stand and let's continue in a time of worship and then Rick will close us out. Yeah. 